Y'all want to make a goofy video? This one's just for fun. It's just a fun one. It's just a fun one. Let's just make a fun one. What's up? My name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer, videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly shoot portraits, events, weddings. If there's a person in the photo, I probably want to take it. Today, I just want to make something short and sweet and fun for y'all. I want to talk about some of the legacy digital cameras I would love to own. You know, there's just, there's so many cameras that came out in the sort of earlier days in my photography career that I just absolutely couldn't afford, but are now so cheap. And like, it's really hard not to just like spend money on those because, uh, you know, new cameras, are amazing they're incredible they do unbelievable shit i don't love them i love using older cameras i really enjoy them uh but the new cameras just do a lot of the stuff i need them to do for the work i do but for pleasure like for, for going out and shooting for fun there's so many other cameras that i would gravitate towards if i just wanted to enjoy myself or i wanted to get very particular looks or there's certain things i wanted to photograph so i just want to run through that list with you i'm going to go brand by brand of the of the stuff that i'd really like a few things we're sticking to um cameras that have an interchangeable lens system because there's also like a whole separate video on like point and shoot cameras that I would love to own that we can go through and we will do that but this is just going to be that list of interchangeable cameras that either I've owned in the past and I loved or ones I'd really like and what I would like to have them for and why. Quick pause here I also just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has taken the time to comment and like and subscribe. I've got some fun stuff I'd like to do uh, once I find the time and the money to make that happen but I've actually got, speaking of legacy cameras, I've got a kind of cool idea that I'm cooking up with a friend of mine. And I think we're gonna see some really fun stuff on this channel because of that. So definitely subscribe and follow along. Cameras from Canon, I would love to own. Canon 5D classic. A lot of people talk about how at the time that this camera was coming out, they were trying to encourage people to shift to digital from film photography. So they created a sensor that could replicate film very well. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why they did what they did. I, I wasn't there. Um, I was alive, but I wasn't in the boardroom. All I can say is that the Canon 5D Classic, I do love the images that come out of it. I think it's a very, very pretty camera. And I think for certain types of work, especially like really beautiful, gentle portraiture, you can get amazing results. And I would love to own this camera. I've never owned it, but I would love to. Next one is the Canon 5D Mark II. I have owned this camera twice. Both times I've sold it, both times I've regretted it. I sold it like not that long ago. I, I sold it because I, I wanted the cash to invest in something I needed for my business. And that was a business decision, not a personal decision. If it was a personal decision, I would have held on to that camera because I love it. Some of the images I've gotten off of it, I just really enjoy. And I will definitely pick this camera up again at some point soon. Building on that is the Canon 60. Uh, a lot of people, I think, were kind of waffling between like the 60 or the 5D Mark II for a while there. And I think that's probably because they fit similar similar sort of niches with the 5D being their sort of more flagship option. And then the 60 kind of coming in similarly, but a little bit different. The feel of them, of the images themselves are a little bit different. And I, I would just love to own both to be able to compare them and mess around with them. The next one is the Canon 20D. I don't know why I want this camera. I have never used it. I have never even really looked into it too deeply. I just, I think those older crop sensor Canon cameras just interest me for some reason. Uh, I might pick one up soon actually. So I shoot on a Canon uh, 1N as a film camera and it has an EF mount on it. And I recently just saw somebody selling a Canon 20D with a 50 mil 1.8 for hundred bucks Canadian. So I, I figured I, I want that lens for my camera anyways. And if it comes with a body that's weird and fun, why not? So I guess I'm going to get a Canon 20D. I don't know. For some reason, I'm just like drawn to that camera. I got nothing. I got no reason for that. Last one I'll talk about from Canon is the Canon 1DX Mark II. I have owned the Canon 1DX, the original. I got it for a really crazy deal and I owned it for a while. I ended up selling it, uh, but I did like that camera a lot. I would love to shoot on the 1DX Mark II. You know, I was actually talking to my buddy D Rosa. Uh, I've talked about him on the channel before. You've probably seen his stuff too. I was talking about how I think I really want to get into more sports photography. Specifically, like I'm a runner. I love doing sports photography within running. I genuinely think, and I was talking to him about this, I would so happily jump onto the 1DX Mark II as my main sports camera. I know it's old. I know that there's like way like in theory like better sports cameras but i just i really like using that camera i really like the build the body the ergonomics and i like the images that come out of it and i just 
really fucking love just the like slap of that shutter. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm into it. I like that camera and that's just one I want to own. Also quick note here. These are just fun cameras. Don't, you don't have to go nuts in the comments about trashing these cameras because they're not good or this one's better than that one. These are just fun cameras I want. Can't we just make a fun video and not have to argue too much? Maybe, I don't know, maybe not. The camera industry is arguing a lot right now. Moving on to Nikon, there's three cameras that I would really love to have from Nikon at some point. Uh, one of them I've actually owned, which is the D800. I loved this camera, but I just found that the um, the files were like really rough when it came to <laughs> using them on my computer. It's a 36 megapixel sensor, and and I don't know, I just I found that my my computer was struggling with it. I loved working with the images. I thought they were really beautiful. And uh, I mean, as you've been seeing here, like they're, they're just, they're nice. It's, it's a nice quality camera. I would definitely pick this up again. The other one I would say is the D600. I've worked with files from that before too. And, and I really enjoyed that. I think it would actually give a lot of the similar benefits to the D600 in terms of the style of the, the rendering and everything like that. But maybe some files that'd be easier to work with. And just the body and everything just seems really nice to use. The last one from them is the D3. I've just, I've never used their like flagship larger 1DX style uh, camera before. And I would just love to play with it. I don't know if I'd want to necessarily own it or spend a ton of money on it, but it just seems fun. It just seems like a fun camera. Okay, Olympus. Uh, I have two cameras here. One, one is sort of a line of cameras and the other is like specific camera so the olympus pen series cameras um i'll throw up an image of the one i'm like thinking in my mind's eye right now that i would love i don't know why it just seems like a fun little carry around camera to have something that would be like great to be able to pocket and use and all that kind of stuff and the other one is the uh the om em1 x that is their like chunky body uh, sports camera it's so weird. It's like, it's so big. It takes everything away from being a micro four thirds in terms of like being small and effective to use. <laughs> but it like, I mean, it shoots very fast. I'm sure the autofocus is good enough for, for sports and stuff like that. It seems like it's solid. I don't know. It just seems fun. Like it seems like a fun camera to use and it's like bomb proof. I mean, it has like crazy IPX rating and all this stuff. You know, if I was gonna get into some more sports photography this year, I don't know, maybe I would be looking between like the 1DX Mark II and that. Uh, don't at me in the comments because I know that, that the issues with that would be probably low, low light would be pretty rough. I don't really care about like crazy subject separation when I'm doing sports. So I don't care about a smaller sensor from that regard. But yeah, I would have to invest in like probably pretty expensive glass in order to get decent low light performance. So that would probably be a hang up, but it just seems cool. It seems like a fun camera, doesn't it? Look at it, it's a freaking brick. It's a tiny little big little brick thing. It seems fun. Fuji. Now I have owned a lot of Fuji cameras. I don't know. I'll put up a list of all the cameras I've owned because it's been a lot of them. Um, but there are a few that I would love to own that I've never had. And these are cameras that they don't produce anymore, but I would just really enjoy having. Well, maybe one of them they produce still. The GFX 50R. For me, this is the medium format camera I want to own. Yes, it's slow. Yes, it's laggy. Yeah, the autofocus sucks. I don't, I don't care about any of that. I just, I want this camera. I love the form of it. I love the feel of it. I, I don't know. I just think it's a cool camera. I think 50 megapixels is a nice sweet spot for medium format. Um, sure, more megapixels might be cool, but I don't know if I would need that, but I don't know, man. It's a cool camera. Other ones, uh, the X-Pro1, it's just, it's that like cool legacy camera that I think is just like, a meaningful camera when it comes to the Fuji lineup. I think like the X-T1 and the X-Pro1 are both like very special and either one of them really I would like, but the X-Pro1 with the rangefinder style is just kind of cool and fun. It's a nice setup. I have used that sensor before. It's a lovely sensor. I really like the images that come out of it. And the other one would be the X-E3. I have owned the X-E1, the X-E2, the X-E4. I have not owned the X-E3. I think that was, uh, there's a couple things I really liked about that. The fact that it still had the uh, the joystick in the front for the manual focus, autofocus, single focus. And uh, the quality of it was just really high. I, I love that camera. I think the XE4, uh, the ergonomics were just not quite as nice, even though it's arguably a better camera. XE3 is one I'd love to own. Okay, two more. Lumix. Um, there's there's like a whole bunch of little point and shoots from them that seem really fun, but I would say like the one from them that just, I don't know, that I feel drawn to is the GF9. Have you guys seen this camera? It's it's 
not their best camera. I know, like something like a like a GX eighty five might be like a better choice, but like the GF nine just seems fun. It seems like a camera I could like throw in my pocket and just enjoy using, and that would be sort of the place it would fit. It would be like, okay, we're going for a dog walk, we're going to a restaurant or something. I'm gonna pick up the GF nine, throw it in my pocket with a tiny little pancake lens, and enjoy that. Sony. There's literally nothing. I, I'm not. I, I think the only things I would want from Sony in terms of bodies is like the new stuff. I got no interest in their older bodies at all. So that can just be pushed aside. But maybe there's there's. I'll, I'll say one thing for Sony. There's one lens. When I owned the A7 IV, I had the Zeiss 55 millimeter f 1.8, and that might be my favorite lens. Maybe not my favorite lens of all time, but one of my favorite lenses ever. Like that would be the first lens I would buy if I went back to Sony and it, it would, it wouldn't make me go back to Sony, but it, it, it certainly would be in the conversation. The only camera body I would want from them is a lens. Cool. Uh, lastly, like, uh, I don't, I don't know, all of them. I, I'd like to use all of them. I don't know. I'm not, I don't think they're all the best, but like, I would like to jump into some of their older cameras. The only one from them that I can think of right now I'd really want isn't a legacy camera. It's the uh, the M11 monochrome. I love the idea of having like a black and white only camera and I would love to mess around with the monochrome and see what that's like. The M11, there's also the Q3. I think the M11 is just like gorgeous and the image of the scene off of it. And my buddy Gadgen has done a review on it a little while ago and it just, it looked fucking cool. So that's my list. Those are the fun legacy cameras and one new camera, uh, none of which I own currently, some of which I might own in the next little while. Um, but uh, what about you? What are some legacy cameras? You can throw down anything. If you wanna do film, if you wanna do digital, if you wanna do like uh, interchangeable or point and shoot, I'm gonna make a film one and a point and shoot uh, video, but I would love to hear what you have to say. So thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you. Oh, we should do a lens one too. Cause there's a bunch of lenses I would like. So, uh, if you like the idea of this video, let me know and, uh, let's keep exploring this stuff together. Cause I think it's super fun. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Have a lovely day. Peace. Mm -hmm.